What is going on, everyone? Welcome back to another Best Bet Show. As always, I'm your host, Maddie Chucks, and we got a different face on the show for the first time. Give a warm welcome to JFAR. JFAR, you look comfortable as hell. You look like you're enjoying life. What's going on? How are you? I'm loving life, man. Glad to be here. Thanks for having me on, Maddie. Super excited to be on and ready to talk some football with you guys. Yeah, it's, uh, you know, as of right now, we're recording this early in the morning. Uh, you guys can still watch it before the game start. The whole Flashbacks team is actually at this London game that's going on right now. But someone had to someone had to work. Someone had to be here and make sure the videos come out. Um, you know, someone had to grind. No, I'm just kidding. I took way too much time off from my wedding and honeymoon and all that. But it's glad to be back. I'm happy the boys are enjoying it over there. But we will still give you content. And Jay Farr, thank you so much for coming in on short notice to, to fill some spots and give us some good plays. So we're going to dive right into it. Um, we have three plays for you guys that are going to be best bet show plays, of course, tracked separately on the show. Uh, Jay Farr has a sneaky touchdown long shot for one player that we're going to look at. And then we did a three touchdown score or parlay uh, for about plus 900 odds on FanDuel so everyone can play it. Before we get into that, like, comment, and subscribe. It helps us out. We're on a road to 5K. I think we're going to do a giveaway at 5K. We're going to have more uh, football tailgates uh, content coming up, some hockey pregame stuff coming up. But make sure you're tuned in and never miss a beat. And uh, I didn't give you the best intro, so let me backtrack that. You've probably seen Jay Farr smacking some ridiculous lotto with too many numbers for me to try to count what that is. Um, you've grown a lot over the past year or so. You're now doing this full time, which is absolutely awesome. All the blessings the to blessing you. How does it feel finally getting here where you are? Dude, it feels incredible, honestly. Um, I've been doing stuff like sports betting, daily fantasy, all this type of stuff for years and years. I put a lot of time into it. And um, just to be able to realize that and share it with the world, share it with people, like you brilliant people over here at Flash Picks, it's, um, it's a huge blessing, man. Um, I never take it for granted. Um, I wake up every day, like, super excited to do this. So, man, I'm living it. Yeah, it looks like it. I mean, you look like you're happy as hell. I always <laughs> see you cashing some stuff, so... Uh, make right. sure also if you want to see more of JFR's plays, uh, beat the books Discord. Um, I can try to post a link and get it in the description below. I'll also link his Twitter below. So if you don't follow him, uh, check the link in the description to see how to find his stuff. But now we're on a time limit, so let's get into the plays. Uh, we could talk first. I'll do the one uh, Brees Hall over 15.5 receiving yards, and that's points bet dropping a 15 and a half. It's 17 and a half on other books. Um, I like that number as well. I'm obviously going to take the best line for me. I think he gets 20 plus. If you look at his game log. He only got 20 plus versus the Bills in Week One, uh, but that was because it was a good matchup. Faced three horrible matchups, and now he's not on a snap count. He's ready to unleash. Everyone's on his rush yards for good reason. I like that too. But for such a low number versus such a good receiving yard target, and just how much he's going to be on the field. His longest reception is 10 and a half. So they think he's going to catch one long one. What are your thoughts on this play? And uh, if you want to add on to it, be my guest. Yeah, loving the spot, Matty. Um, the one thing about this spot is Dalvin Cook, as you said, is going to take less and less snaps just because he's not looked great, which is going to up Brees Hall snaps. He's feeling healthy. He's not going to be on restrictions, which means he's going to be out there for some of those third downs, honestly. And even on the first and second downs, the Jets don't really trust Zach Wilson enough to just – always give them like an intermediate route concept. They're going to dump it down sometimes. And Brees Hall is going to be the beneficiary of that. And with his speed and power against the Broncos defense, this could be one catch and he can get yeah. it. Two catches to me is almost like a guarantee at, at a certain point, you know, and the volume could definitely be there for him. So, so many ways to catch this really like the angle. Um, I don't think if he gets the ball, the Broncos can tackle him. So man, we're good here. I think. Yeah, I I, lo I love the low number. You guys know I love my receiving yards, receptions to running backs. The numbers are so low, you know, it's never over. You're not you're not waiting for some guy to get a million yards and it's the second quarter and he has two. Um, you know, if he has two in the second quarter, we're kind of on pace. Uh, so right. it's a it's a it's a great spot in a high usage situation. We're gonna move on to the second play. I'll let Jay Farr talk about this and why you love Jalen Warren in this spot. Yeah, so we're going with Jalen Warren over two and a half receptions 
We're getting minus 135 at Bet MGM. Really, really love this spot. And I'm actually so surprised that this line is still two and a half, especially for a viable price. He's crushed this line in actually every single game this year. Um, there's some games he's had six receptions. He had four receptions against Cleveland. And what I love is his targets have been very, very consistent. Getting six targets in three of the games and then only four targets against the Raiders in a game the Steelers won. This should be a game the Steelers are probably playing from behind on. And with Kenny Pickett's arm and inaccuracy issues, I don't think Matt Canada is going to be scheming too many deep concepts. There's probably going to be a lot of dump-offs on third down. And Jalen Warren is by far the third down back. Not to mention the fact that this weather in this game isn't ideal. So a lot of ways to kind of get to that game script that we're throwing to Jalen Warren out of the backfield. And we don't need him to crush it. We don't need him to, like, break a screen for huge yards. We just need him to catch the ball, right? Yeah. And three times, I think it happens pretty easy. It's happened every single time this year. This is one of my favorite spots this week by far. Um, yeah, Maddie, anything you got to say on that? No, yeah. Uh, just to add on, the good indicator, too, is that I'm looking at other books are putting this line. Caesars has minus 174. Uh, Bet Rivers minus 162. Uh, DraftKings minus 145. Still playable number for me, but FanDuel toss in a minus 158. Uh, it looks like MGM is sleeping at the wheel. And I like your point and just catch the ball. Don't worry about the yards because you look at his game log. Uh, he had five catches on six targets for 12 yards against the Niners. Um, he's seen six plus targets in three of the four games. And the one he missed had four targets, which is, I think if he gets four targets, he still catches his number. Still good. Um, yeah. So, yeah, just catch the ball. Whatever happens after. If he runs further, honestly, good for him. He's probably going to stay in the game script to do it again. So, um, it doesn't really matter, mm-hmm. though. Yeah. But I like the I like the number. The odds on other books are telling you it's a good line. Um, so, to me, you have to play the value. So, I love the spot. I love my running backs as well. And 100% hit rate. Why would you hop off at this number? Especially with the 14-mile-an-hour wins they have. Um, mm-hmm. And Kenny Pickett's offense, which has looked like they've been doing all year anyway. So, I love it. I think it's a great spot. And then that's the second play. We're going to the third play. This is not one where we're going to need – where we can coast through all four quarters in cash. We're going to need this guy to dominate all game. And we think he can. That's Jamar Chase over 79.5 receiving yards minus 115 on DK. I did toss him in 100-plus yards lotto. Um, T. Higgins is out. Uh, I think Joe Burrow is getting better with his calf injury. I think he'll be a lot more confident. Um, and I think – the Bengals just need to put something together. Um, obviously, the Cardinals' defense. The Cardinals have been good, but the defense has still shown signs to be exploited. Um, I know the Cowboys the other week didn't look too good against them, but they had like two or three offensive line guys missing. Um, where I think it ruined their offense. I think the Bengals are going to get better kind of each week. Uh, they kind of got smacked in the mouth against the Titans. I think... Not to say he's due, but you, there's a positive regression, I think, for the Bengals. And I think Jamar Chase is going to have to do a huge workload to ensure that they do that. Exactly. And I, I will say I'm not one to usually kind of bet off this kind of idea. But as you said, they're due. And they're due in a way where the Bengals are going to purposely want Joe Burrow to have a great game. Just because there's all these narratives out. He's been paid all this money. He's come in, not looked great. Obviously, the calf has something to do with that. But just to get momentum and morale in that locker room, you're going to want your boy to go out there and have a banner game. And that's going to having a banner game for Burrow means hitting Jamar Chase on the deep routes, on the intermediate routes that he busts for extra yards, and just getting that offense sparking. And no better spot to do it than against a lowly Arizona team that doesn't have much to play for. You can go in and just kind of dot them up. And even if the Bengals go up in this game, I have a sneaky feeling that they're just going to keep letting Burrow dot just to get that confidence, you know, because why not? And obviously this is the secondary that Jamar Chase can absolutely route up. Like you said, T. Higgins is out, which should funnel even more targets to his way. I think this is one of those games where both of them just go off. Um, Jamar Chase, 100-something yards, two touchdowns, tight beat. You know, it, it just screams it to me. No, I, I love it. I think uh, division-wise, too, they're really not out of the division yet, even being at one and three. Um, if you look at the standings, uh, the Ravens-Steelers are playing each other. If the Steelers win, the Steelers go to three and two. Uh, the three and two, the Ravens will be three and two. If the Bengals win, they'll be two and three. So they're still going to be in right. contention. The Browns at two and two have a bye, so they're going to stay where they are. 
Um, this is kind of a, I wouldn't say it's a must win for the Bengals, but I guess you can say that if they go one and four in this division, you're, you're not coming back, but it certainly, it certainly feels that way. It feels like yeah. a must win for sure. And uh, yeah. the Cardinals, I mean, Cardinals have been kind of feisty, but at the same time, it's the best team you're going to get to try to ensure this. The Browns play the Niners next week, uh, which is, you know, they could lose as well. So everything's kind of open as long as they win this game and they don't win this game unless Jamar Chase, especially with T Higgins out has a huge game. There's just absolutely no way. Unless Tyler Boyd is like 150 yards, which I couldn't tell you the last time that happened, right. uh, if it ever has. Uh, so to me, uh, it's a Joe Burrow, uh, Jamar Chase. I think we're getting, you know, they're getting a little disrespected. And I think he's going to pop off. So I love that play. I think he gets 100 plus. Um, I think we can kind of catch some deep balls and kind of make that happen. So those are the three plays. Brees Hall or 15 and a half receiving yards. Jalen Warren over two and a half receptions. And Jamar Chase over 79 and a half receiving yards. Now we're going to the fun stuff. Jay Far, you got a sneaky touchdown look that you want to sprinkle. It's a little scary, yes. but tell us yeah. why there's value. Hey, this is one where if it doesn't even come close or doesn't even get a chance, I don't want to hear any smoke. I <laughs> promise you that this is this is something that we're hoping the Titans get to the three yard line or closer because we're taking Ryan Tannehill anytime touchdown, rush touchdown, plus seven hundred. Look. Okay, I know it's the Titans offense. <laughs> Mike Vrabel is stuck in the 70s, and they don't really move the ball that often. But one, it's the Colts, and I think that Hopkins has a game, which is another sneaky look I like. So if they do get to the three or lower, this team runs read option from the three on very, so often, so often. So that means that there's like a 50-50 chance, which if the team just bites on Derrick Henry, that Tannehill does that thing where he just keeps it, walks in the end zone, does a like layup celebration, and you're good. Or if they get to like the one, everyone is doing the tush push now. So there's a very fat chance that we get a QB sneak where he just gets a free touchdown. To me, there's so many outs on this Ryan Tannehill touchdown that if, if you think the Titans can score on any given week, I think you play this for these odds because these odds are, are something like a quarterback that doesn't even run at all. And that's just not true for Tannehill. So that's yeah. my angle. I, I think the option too with uh with Derrick Henry too, everyone's gonna assume Derrick Henry's getting the rock. Um, right. you know, fake a handoff, scoot over the side, or tush push, um, I think is very much a possibility. Plus seven hundred, I think it's a great I think it's a great uh right. value play. No one's saying hammer it, but I think plus seven hundred sneaky to sprinkle a little bit, make some money if it happens, and so it'll be fun to look out for them in the red zone as well. Um we do have a chalk touchdown parlay for you guys. Not chalk, but you know, one that you guys will have more a little confidence in. Um, more confidence in the Tannehill one, but unless the Tannehill one hits, then we're gonna have JFAR come on and do some more of these. But uh three <laughs> we're gonna have a three touchdown score parlay plus nine oh eight. Um, and we're just getting right into it. It's Cooper Cup. And you could you I'll I'll let you say I'll I'll let the I'll let the guests say and you start off. Yeah, so um you got cup. Um, Devon A. Chain and Brees Hall, starting with Cooper Cup. Um, he's at plus 165 to score a touchdown on Candle. It's Cooper Cup. <laughs> I, I know he's coming back from injury. I know that he's supposed to be on a snap count. But if they're going to keep him on the bench, it's not going to be in the red zone. It's going to be like earlier on in drives, maybe like around midfield. So if they get to the red zone area, we saw in Cooper Cup's triple crown year, that this dude is just a touchdown magnet. Like Stafford's going to him in the red zone. So to get plus 165 in a game that should be fast paced, high total, to me, that's just put it in there. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. And uh, it changed. I mean, you got him. The Giants are going to expect to lose by 105. Um, they're going to run the ball all game. Uh, they should run yeah. all over the Giants. Even the Giants keep it close, which could happen. You know, I'm not going to say they're always going to get stomped on, but. Advanced analytics proves that they are the worst team in the league right now <laughs> for for good reason. Uh, yeah. But him getting the value that we have, it's, you know, they, him and Moser could both have a rushing touchdown in this game, and it wouldn't right. shock me. Exactly. And Miami's done that plenty of times already this year. Like, clear, clearly these two are both getting work. Um, clearly these two both have blistering speed so they can score at any time. And I'm a Giants fan, so I know just how bad they are. Same. I think the Giants <laughs> score some just off the fact that Miami scores so fast, but the game to me isn't going to be close. I don't assume the Giants are going to win, which means a good game script for running. I think A-Chain gets in there. 
Yeah, I agree. And then Brees Hall, we talked about the matchup versus the Broncos. Um, I'm pretty sure if I suited up at running back, I might be able to get a yard or two, which I wouldn't say any other team I could do that against. But <laughs> it looks like this Broncos team is just allowing everything to happen. And uh, the whole bend don't break. No, they're, they're just break. They, uh, <laughs> yeah, they're, they're bending and breaking. <laughs> yeah, they allow the most rushing touchdowns to running backs and most receiving touchdowns to running backs. Um, we talked about Hall is kind of dangerous in both. Um, and I could see either or happening, you know, snap count, not really a thing anymore. So they say, so in the red zone, Zach Wilson, you don't want him to turn the ball over. Um, if they get, you know, within that five, I think it's going to be, you know, can he just break through and the Broncos will just most likely open the door for him. So right. Just wide open. Yep. <laughs> <Exactly>. <laughs> so we have plus yep. nine away on those three and that's going to be it for us today. Jay Farr, again, thank you so much for, for coming in and uh, giving us your time. Guys, like, comment, and subscribe. Check the links to see how to follow him and to get all of our plays as well. Subscribe to the newsletter. Have a great Sunday. Do you have any last words for the fans? Hey, just thanks for having me on. Um, it's been a blast kicking it with you, Maddie. Um, good luck to everyone this Sunday. Let's crush it. And, yeah, keep it going, man. You heard it from him. That's it. Thank you guys for tuning in. We'll catch you guys next time. Peace.